and there are times on the path where it is very, very difficult. Um, but then there are other times where, I suppose, and that's the inspiration, isn't it? Where there are times where things do seem to put, come together, and you can have a clearer understanding. Once those insights start coming, uh, yes. Once you go, oh, that's what they mean by non-self. Yes. Oh, that's what they mean by yes. condition-dependent origination. Mm -hmm. And you start, you start to get some momentum behind that. Mm -hmm. And you, you're learning where the right balance is. You're where, learning where it is actually that you have to place your mind. I'll never forget, it's so emblazoned on my mind, the moment I realised that I knew what it was I was supposed to look at. And it was just, I was in the shrine room, I was in a meditation, and I was free of hindrances, and, and, it was, and I was looking at things rise and pass away, and it was so within myself. It was... I wasn't having to recreate the world. I wasn't having to do anything heroic. I, all I had to do was pay attention, mm. free of self-concern, at what mm. was taking place. And I realised that I can do it. I can do that. That's so within myself. I'm not mm. having to become somebody else mm. at all. Or pretend. Or... No, none mm. of that. I can yeah. just observe. And and, it, and at that point, I knew that it was, it was all going to work. Mm. Yes. So... There's nothing like direct personal experience. No, and that's what you and get. And once somebody's, once somebody's got that, they're hooked, really. I mean, it might very well be that somebody passes through one of the fruitions, maybe the first fruition, and they get a, for a while they get a bit, you know... Yes. <laughs> get a bit sort of, oh, well, it's, it's inevitable I'll become enlightened at some point oh, now. <laughs> very rarely. I think mo the vast majority of people go, oh, come on, let's, let's do this, you know. Yes. Um, but occasionally somebody might just fall away for a while mm. but even they are guaranteed mm. eventually to to realize it but it, to, to my mind i think once you've had a fruition and you know you've had a fruition we, your whole life has changed there and then mm. and when we talk about it being um, um, change, a change of lineage is mm. how we describe it in buddhism so going for the lineage of a ordinary uninstructed worldly opportunity to a noble one, somebody who is destined for total realization, and who has the knowledge that indeed they will come to know the unknown. There is that that certainty after mm. what we call stream winning. Yes. Um, that yes, indeed, that all the doubt's gone, you know, mm. and there is this certainty that indeed I will come to know the unknown, mm. and that that really just carries you forward, propels you. Yes, and I, and I, I think also that. Um, you you don't put pressure on yourself then because you have that s certainty I suppose so I remember thinking well I, however long it takes is however long it takes I wasn't going to sort of put any pressure on or, well, or come to you and say where am I well quite because well, quite, that's all that that's all that personality <laughs> belief on the first path yes. the mind is consumed with its ideas about where it is on the path that is a fetter that stops any real yes, practice. Yes. After that, the, no, there isn't the same pressure no. in the same way. And also one's relationship to time has changed. Mm. Because at that point, mm. one has experienced Nibbana, or, albeit the mind-made Nibbana, which is the fruition, which only lasts for a finger snap. But that is a finger snap of being beyond time. Yes. yes. And not being fooled by concepts of time anymore having realised the timelessness. Timelessness, even f for a single instant, changes your your relationship to time. Yes. And so there isn't the same sense of, come on, <laughs> got to get on with this. <laughs> yes, where am I now? <laughs> yes. It was, a, it was a very interesting and a tough thing to do, but I... I felt it was, like you're saying, it was inevitable for me. I, I definitely felt that that was, I'd come here for a reason, and even though I didn't really know what the reason was, or I didn't understand Buddhism or anything, I, I came for the meditation, to be yeah. honest. Um, I just See, because Buddhism is only a vehicle for this, yes. to allow this realisation. It, 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 it's, it's, it's so deeply intimate and personal, this, the desire to be free of suffering the desire to understand life, mm. which does breed all these speculative views that people go in for and all this mad behaviour that everyone goes in for. But it's true for everyone. 
you know, and eventually, I don't know why it is in, in every generation there are just a few people who decide, you know, this is, this is it for me. It definitely was for me. Mm. I mean, looking back, it was obvious, looking back now, mm. with hindsight, yes. well, with a bit of clarity, yes. Yes. that I'd come this time round in order to, to finish mm -hmm. the job. You know, funnily enough, you know, the real when the realization comes, you realize, God, I've got inf there's inf infinity to, you know, eternity and infinite infinity to 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 dance and play and explore. Mm -hmm. You know, suddenly these this boundless freedom, yes. and so everything just has its own time and space. Mm -hmm. So it's not really the end, is it? It's oh, no. it's finally to be at the beginning. It's, it's finally the beginning, to be. Wouldn't you? Yes. It's just to be awake. Yes. Finally awake. And then there's just that sort of delicious choice of well, I could be busy or I could just sit here. Honestly, I, I get terrible. <laughs> Progressively, it's more. I'm taking more of the choice. I'll just sit here. <laughs> because there's really nothing to do. And I find when I go off and do things, thinking. You should go off and do things, even if it's you know going on a holiday or something. You think, well, I'm here. There are sights, there are sounds, there are tastes. They're slightly yes. different than the normal, but yes. but yes. actually, I'm just as much on holiday when I'm looking over Bradford and Avon yes. as I am if I've been on in Portugal. Or it's just a it's just a change of scenery, I suppose. Yeah, and but that delightful quietude, that that wonderful peace, that that sense that all is as it should be. Mm. Is there whether I'm in Australia or wherever I'm in? Yeah, and that is permanent. It never changes, does it? <laughs> no, no. Never changes. No. And, and f for me, there's a mystery. From the moment I wake up in the morning, there's this this sense of mystery of of like oh. <laughs> you know, it's like you never get bored of it. It's like oh my goodness, this is all, this is all happening, and not knowing how it's happening. No, and, and that's that's another reason I feel compassion for people because they've so decided what's going to be happening that day and yet nobody really knows. We can't know. So there's just that pleasure, isn't there, of just finding it as you go along. And if, if you seek to enforce your will upon the world and control it to be exactly what you want, yeah. you're living a completely yes. dead life. Because yes. it, doesn't, it doesn't take count of changing conditions. Mm. But I think people are quite, I don't know if impatient is the right word, but most mornings I go for a walk and uh, I was telling someone and they were saying, is it the same walk? Is it the same walk every day? <laughs> and I thought, it is, but... Oh, Kathleen, it's clearly, so boring. It isn't. <laughs> exactly. I know. Exactly. And that's the thing. You know, okay, it's just a 40-minute walk. But it's not. I am completely replete with Bradford and Avon. It's like I go... F uh, I just go for walking the country park and, yes. and you see the dogs and you see the people and yes. you see the birds and you hear the, the breeze through the, through the trees. And, and it's just so delightful. Mm. It's the same walk I normally do, but it's But it's never. not, is it? I mean, it's always different. And I don't mean you just see different people, but it's just... Life is always new. Yes. It's never old. Yes. And it can't be the same as the day before, because, well, it's all a day older. <laughs> you know, even, the, I don't know, the stones have moved on the path, or they're smaller, or... I mean, it's just, life goes the, on. The Buddha's, the Buddha's chief disciple, Sariputta, uh, in the Theragata, which is the, the verses of the elders, uh, he, he, I can't remember how the poem goes, but essentially he says, other people think we're so boring, yet I delight in these rocks and these streams and in the, yes. the remote living, and, you know, I focus my mind and meditate, and, uh, you know, I wait, I wait happily and peacefully like a, a man who's finished his work at week, he waits for his wages. You yes, know. It's like yes. there's this sense of, wow, well, yes. whatever. And, and whatever happens is fine. Yeah. That's all good. And I think um, the first time I came here, it was a talk at, by Alan James, and um, I don't know if it was called this, but certainly it was his first sentence, the world is perfect as it is. And I thought, I, I 
didn't doubt that. I thought that's really interesting thing to say, but I need to know that for myself. It's no good him telling me that. I need to know that. And now I do. The yeah. world is perfect as it is. Which is which is why there are no arguments. Which is why, you know, the Buddha said, I do not I do not dispute with the world, the world disputes with me. People will argue that mm -hmm. based on their distorted view of the world. But when you undertake the training voluntary, voluntarily, uh, you can come to find out for yourself, then you find that the result is that you realise that actually everything is a absolutely as it should be mm -hmm. and that the work, this particular realm, this human realm is tough, it's difficult, there's some awful things that, happen, that go on, yet it is perfect as it is. Mm -hmm. Can't be anything other than that, because deeply unsatisfactory. Yes. If you depend upon it. Yes. Yes. But if there's no dependence upon any of it for anything, for your happiness, for your peace, then there is just this delightful, unending peace that's that's available. That is, because everything in the phenomenal universe, including thoughts and feelings, consciousness, and everything has no enduring quality at all. The only thing that is really real is this endless peace. Mm. Yes, yes. And everything's so connected to everything else and it's all so fleeting, so how can it be depended on? <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you but don't you need a scientist to, to tell you. <laughs> well, I love science. I do. I love. I love the gadgets. I mean, this couldn't happen without uh, yeah. without science. I do. I love it. But this whole endeavor is is not science's domain. It has no. nothing to do with science whatsoever. Although I appreciate there's a crossover in terms there of is. quantum yeah. physics and stuff yeah. like that. But no, it's nothing to do with it. And that's the thing. That's why this is a quiet revolution. It's like because you free yourself from the authority of anyone. Mm. Nobody. The scientists can't tell you. No. The priest can't tell you. No. Because you've seen it yourself. Yes. Yes, I know how the world works. And now, uh, for a lot of people... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for a lot of people, that's heresy. I know. Out and out heresy. And that's... And that's oh, well, I've said it now. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 you're in trouble now, Kathleen. <laughs> Luckily, they can't see your face. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, it's that's, for me, why... Why it's a revolution? Partly, what part of the revolution is, and they don't like that because they want that authority. Mm. They want to be the authority. It's power, it's power. Mm. and that shores up their sense of self, mm. and um, therefore they're living. In, they're living in their delusion. <laughs> and sometimes, though, you know, science will have got papers and proof on, oh, I'm so vague now, but on something. Um, and uh, people, things that we actually already know, but until it's in a scientific journal, whatever, people then think, oh, I, I, I believe that now. But there's, there's things that we just know as part of the planet, part of the universe, that, we don't need science to, to tell us that, because we know. And <coughs> just accepting something because sci a scientific research has shown it to be so is still blind adherence to a view mm. or a belief. Yes. It is, it, and it, in no way, shape or form does it transform you, does it change you, does it lead to a revolution in understanding. Mm. Yes. Still go home with your gripes, still go home having completely ignored yes, reality yes. for the entirety yeah. of the day. Yeah, it doesn't give you any insight into anything. Not any real insight. Because no. it's not personal. No. It's not coming from your direct experience. Mm -hmm. it, it is what I like to say. It is, it is reinforcing a concep the conceptual, I the idea of the world mm -hmm. conceptually, whereas what we're dealing with is the actual world as it unfolds moment by moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I write in my book about the fact that for somebody practicing insight, they come to see that the Big Bang isn't something that happened. Well, regardless of whether there was something that happened 13 billion years ago, it's irrelevant. The Big Bang is happening now. Mm -hmm. Life is 
the universe is coming into being and ceasing now mm. you know yes. and, and life becomes a lot more yes. Yes. dynamic and profound when mm. you when you acknowledge that and you see right that here, through right insight. Now. Yes. exactly